attitude in my prayers lately, too. Oh, man, I, uh, this past week. <laughs> It'd be winter, too. <laughs> people, running, people running red lights and stop signs and pulling out in front of me, and I'm going, where's my gun? <laughs> Where's my bazooka? <laughs> All right. Galatians. We're kind of winding down on Galatians. We're in chapter 5. All right. All right. Tell me what... Uh, anything pop in your mind if I say Galatians chapter 5? Uh, no, the, the I flesh in my mind. mind. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that anymore. <laughs> well, Galatians five twenty two is where we have the list of the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. Right. So when you talk about Galatians five, that's always what I think of. Right. You know, uh, the first part of it, of chapter five is this continuation where Paul has been giving them this debate argument about what how foolish they are because. They want to return to slavery by being bound by the law, right? Because these Judaizers are telling them, you know, if you want to be saved, you've got to trust in Jesus and follow the law. You know, you've got to be a Jew, right? And you have to be circumcised, right? He says, no, 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 right? Many, many times. And then our focal point in our lesson starts in verse 13, my little title of that says, Practice of Liberty, Love One Another, right? <laughs> and 13, it says, For you were called to freedom, brethren. And, and nice, he calls them brethren, right? My brothers. You know, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Because, you know, these are people that he and the others there led to the Lord, you know, while he started these churches. He says, you were called to freedom, only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but through love, serve one another. Okay? What does it mean by do not turn your, oppor- your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh? You know, when you realize that you're just saved by grace, you know, by faith in Jesus Christ alone, that's it. It's going to lead some people to think they can do anything they want, get away with it. Yeah. And he's saying, no, <laughs> you don't want to do that, right? Because if you're actually led by the Spirit, and this is going to be his argument, right? You're led towards doing the right things, not the wrong things. It's those people who don't have the Spirit that their flesh is in control, and they're being led to do the wrong things. You know, which brings up the thing the Lord told me a long time ago. He said, why are you... So surprised that sinners sin. <laughs> People do the craziest stuff, right? It's fun. If you don't have Christ in your life, what is the natural thing to do? Sin. Sin. Right? So we see these people that we have different debates with, whether they're political debates or whatever, right? But when you realize they don't have Christ in their life, well, no wonder they're so confused. <laughs> Lynn, and I, Lynn, Lynn and I were talking about the, uh, you know, the, it talks about in the end times that good would be called evil and evil would be called good, right? Well, that's what's happening in society today, yeah. right? You know, I'll praise the Lord. Brett Kavanaugh got <laughs> confirmed last night. <laughs> yeah. Did I hear it correct? The FBI investigation revealed nothing? Right. No, nothing we didn't already know. They just talked to the same people, the other people yeah. they talked to. So, you know, yeah. they just gave the same story. That, no, they, I wasn't there. <laughs> they really didn't dig very deep. They didn't have anything to do. And it's not in their purvey anyway. <laughs> yeah. Nothing she said would work out anyway. Check that. No, and, it, and it's actually a lot worse than that. There's ex-boyfriend that's now saying... Oh, about her, but I mean... Yeah. Uh, of what happened in that so-called house where the attempted rape took place. Yeah. Right. Well, they don't even know where it is. All, right? Everybody that she said was there wasn't, or the ones that were there said it didn't happen. They didn't see it. It's... Yeah. But anyway, he got confirmed. So praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will right. say one thing before we leave it. That Judd, the senator from Maine, I know Susan she's Collins. kind of a liberal, 
Yeah, and she's I haven't a, particularly liked her, but I have a renewed I respect. Her. I watched that the other day, and it was wonderful. It really was. She did a lot of work on that, a whole lot more than most of the other people. And, and she know, mentioned every point and shot it down. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. And after she's finished, almost all the others that were a little bit on the fence that flipped them, you know, Manchin and uh, yeah, that other guy. Well, Manchin, he either voted for him or he loses the election. He's got coming up in a month. Yeah. He right. Loses West Virginia, him. where Trump saved the coal industry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. He, you know. Now Mikowski in Alaska, she's the one that's biting the dust. She's just yeah. she's going to vote president because she don't want to vote for him. So yeah. she's not voting for him, right? So she's just an alienating herself yeah. from the Republican Party completely, you know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so point is, is that just because you have freedom doesn't mean you want to run off and just do all kinds of crazy stuff, right? He says, but through love serve one another. And the word love is the Greek word agape, which means the kind of love that God gives, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. That expects absolutely nothing in return, just the other person's best interest, period. Right? Mm -hmm. Can you do that by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Not to the degree. Not me. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we we need the Holy Spirit in order to be able to do that, don't we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, God's kind of love. Somebody you don't like. Right? Yeah, serve one another. Now, when he says serve one another, he's talking about the other Christians, right? But the yeah. word serve means to be a slave to. You know, to be at that point again, you're putting the other people's interest above yours. Okay. He goes on in 14, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word, in one statement, right? You shall love your neighbor as yourself. How do we know that's true? How do we know it's true? Uh-huh. God said it. Yeah, but he also said it somewhere else where Jesus specifically spoke the words when they came to him and said, what's the greatest commandment, right? Mm. Matthew, what is Matthew, and he says, "Love the Lord your God, right, and love your neighbor as yourself, right." That's that's the sum of all the law and the prophets. He put that's the sum of all the law and the prophets. <laughs> so we got this thousand years of writings <laughs> that are summed up in that. <laughs> okay. You do it without the Holy Spirit. That's exactly right. Right. He says, but if you bite or devour one another, <laughs> right? Take care lest you, are, you be consumed by one another. If you get into bitter conflicts with each other, right? What happens? Anything good? No. At least not in my scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> but he's saying that if you are like wild animals, <laughs> you know, and if you're putting yourself and what you think and what you want ahead of what other people think and want, right, and you're both doing that, then you end up in this battle, right? And don't we as human beings battle over some of the dumbest stuff? Sometimes we battle over important things. Sometimes we battle over things as stupid as what color is the carpet. <laughs> right? You know, because we, without the Spirit guiding us, right, then the flesh is guiding us. And then what kind of decisions do we make? <laughs> Not so good, right? <laughs> as I call it, we just run off into left field just in no time. <laughs> okay? Then he says, but, but I say, right, walk by the Spirit. What is your lifestyle? Is your lifestyle being led by the Spirit, right? And you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. 
How is somebody filled with the Spirit? The Bible talks about being filled with the Spirit. Again, some people take that to the extreme and think there's some special filling you can get, right? But actually, how are you filled with the Spirit? Simply by listening and following the Spirit instead of your flesh. As Jesus pointed out, right? Not my will, but thy will be done. We need to be saying that all the time. Until my will is thy will. (laughs) Right? Jesus said, if you ask, right, you will receive. But didn't he also say, if I'm in you and you are in me. (laughs) Right? If your will is my will, you can ask anything and it'll be done. Because it's God's will. (laughs) But how often do we decide to put our will above God's will? Too much of the time. (laughs) Right? You know, we live, we still live in these bodies. We still deal with the five senses. We still deal with pride. We still deal with all these things that, you know, and the flesh trying to guide us to do wrong things. So we have to stop on a daily basis, if not hourly or minute by minute, right? And say, Lord, your will be done in my life, right? May your Holy Spirit guide me. You know, when you run into decision time and say, God, what's your will? How often do we say, what do I want to do? Versus, God, what do you want me to do? (laughs) Whether it's a big deal or a little deal. You know, it wouldn't be a bad thing to say, should I go to the store now or later, Lord? Little things, you know, and let the Lord, let the Lord guide you in everything that you're doing, and things going to be a whole lot better. Not going to be perfect. We live in a fallen world with sinful people and consequences of that, but it'll be a whole lot better for you. He'll know when not to get in the car and avoid that accident that you would have had if you got in the car and went when you wanted to go. Or the guy that pulls in front of you. Right? Instead of saying, where's my shotgun? You say, Lord, thank you for slowing me down. <laughs> what did I avoid by being slowed down right here? Yeah. Right? I was thinking how much metal my 357 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's our natural mode. But if we allow God to lead us, right? Well, if see, we, I don't we, have an alternative like right that. <laughs> I, don't, I can't. I don't care. <laughs> so if we have a lifestyle, it says you will not carry out the desire of the flesh, for the flesh sets its desire against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. What does Paul say in Romans seven? You know, he's talking about saying. I do the things I don't want to do and I don't do the things I want to do and you know, oh, what a wretched man I am, (laughs) right? But God, right? And it's really saying is that we have this battle going on, but if we allow ourselves to be led by the Spirit, verse 18, you are not under the law. (laughs) You know, if if you're saved by faith in Christ, right, and you're filled with the Spirit, you're not bound by it. You're not under the law. You have this freedom that comes from having this relationship with Christ. The law could not remove man's sinful nature, right? If we're spirit-led, we're now God-centered. If we're law-led, it's now a self-control issue. (laughs) And good luck with that one. (laughs) Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, and sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, and factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Right? If you don't have Christ and don't have the Spirit, you're being led by the flesh, you're going to do all this crazy stuff. You know, everything from idolatry, and idolatry, by the way, is not just worshiping, quote, false gods. It's putting anything before God, right? Some people just put their search for power or position or money or, you know, anything before their search for God. That's idolatry. Mm -hmm. 
that's where we see it in our country. We don't often fall down to, you know, worship Molech or anything like that, right? <laughs> you know, or Baal, right? But we fall down and worship these other things, you know? And he's saying, those people, if you don't have Christ, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Because only through faith in Christ can you get that, okay? It says, but in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit. And by the way, it's the fruit. It's all-encompassing. All of these things come when you accept Christ. When the Spirit is in your life, right, you get love, agape love, right, joy, peace, you know, peace with God, right, which is an amazing thing because when you're not in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, you're at war with God. There's no peace there, is there? <laughs> okay. Patience. Danny. <laughs> I haven't gone off the handle yet. That's, that's only the way that keeps me going. Yeah. I said every time I have doubt, I think about that. And I said, well, I haven't done anything yet. I'm still yep. See, your patience is hanging in there. Right. Slowly but surely. Right. Yeah. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Right? You know, uh, and in spite of difficulties in your life, you still have things like joy and peace. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, knowing that, as they, the saying goes, this too shall pass. You know, Lynn's dealing with this excruciating pain. But it will pass. Right? It's not there permanently. You know, as, as troublesome as it is, you know, for almost three weeks now, come tomorrow, right? And faithfulness, you know, you know, with people, gentleness, self-control. <laughs> See, you don't run off and do all that crazy stuff because the Spirit is leading you not to. It says, against such thing, there is no law. You know, there's, there's nothing that tells you not to do this stuff, right? <laughs> Matter of fact, it comes as a benefit of being a Christian, right? Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Remember when Paul was talking about, you know, that it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives through me? Because he, he has been crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's what he's trying to get across is that when we accept Jesus, we have this unique relationship. <laughs> you know, Tommy and I were talking about last week, you know, the church is, is a unique thing in all history. Those that are connected to God through Jesus Christ. Okay? Because in a manner of speaking, we were nailed on the cross with Christ. He did it for us, bottom line, right? Christ went to the cross for us, but he took all our sin with him. Our sin comes from our sinful nature. <laughs> but Christ took all of that, nailed it to the cross, so that we could live a life being led by the Spirit. Right? It's actually mind-boggling to stop and try to think about what God has done for us. And yet, here Paul's saying, you have this absolutely incredible, amazing miracle, what Jesus did for you, and now you're over here saying, well, that wasn't good enough. <laughs> I have to add to that by following the law. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's actually a slap in the face of Jesus Christ, isn't it? Mm -hmm. When you stop and think about it. Yeah. And we do the same thing today. People add stuff to faith in Christ. You know, it's one of the reasons why I have so many denominations is that people think I got to add something to it. Is there something we have to do? And don't recognize that it's a God thing. It's already done. There's nothing else you can do. All we do is accept it. Have faith, right? And God provides the faith. 
We can't take any credit. So Paul's saying, you know, I was a, the Jew of the Jews, right? Born of the tribe of Benjamin, raised, you know, and, and learned all the, all the scriptures and the prophets and, you know, et cetera. I'm a, I was the top of the dog. You know, <laughs> I'm the top dog in this whole heap. And yet, it's all nothing. It's simple crap, right? Compared to what Jesus Christ has done for me. <laughs> and he's pointing that out. If you belong to Jesus Christ, then your flesh is crucified. So now we can follow the Spirit. In verse 25, it uses that word if again, but it's more like because we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. The Spirit is within you, so what is your lifestyle? What do you demonstrate to the world? Do you demonstrate, as it says in 22, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Do, do we demonstrate that? One of the reasons the church spread so rapidly in the first century is when they were being crucified. Nobody was cussing at the people that were killing them. They went to, the, to their crosses or whatever, right, with joy in their heart, knowing they're about to see Jesus. I can't imagine being placed on a cross and having things driven through you, knowing you, you're going to die. I mean, you know, I, I just, I can't imagine. Remember Peter said, man, crucify me upside down. I, I don't deserve, you know, to, to even die the way Jesus died. Right? So tradition tells us, right? Peter and and Saul were beaten and thrown into prison, had the shackles on them, right? And in their pain and suffering, what were they doing? Singing. 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 And what happened? <laughs> the jailer and his household and apparently all the prisoners became Christians. As a result of, you know, their reaction, the spirit being <clears throat> alive you know, through them was able to reach all these other people. So we were not only to live, right, but to walk, to have a lifestyle, right, to follow the spirit right, in all that we do. But then he says... Let us not become boastful and challenging one another or envying one another. <clears throat> Isn't it our nature to, in our pride, <laughs> we get anything we do good, we want to take credit for it? Right? And, did, and actually, did we do it? <laughs> you know, when you stop and think about it, right? Especially if it's anything spiritual. If we did anything good because we were following the Spirit, we were demonstrating love and joy, and we're witnessing to somebody, and they accept Christ, right? Did we do it? No, we didn't do it. There's a lot of people who take credit for it. Exactly, we didn't do it. God did it. The Holy Spirit, we can't convict people of sin, no matter what we say or do, Right? But God can use our witness and then God can convict them and cause them to accept Christ, right? Or let's say you're a fantastic athlete. You're a Kyler Murray, right? And you go out there and you perform and you do great things. Where'd you get that talent? Well, a lot of people say they worked hard for it. <laughs> Well, they are supposed to develop it, but if you don't have a certain amount of natural talent, there isn't anything to develop. <laughs> it wouldn't matter how much I practiced, Jerry. I couldn't do that. <laughs> well, see, back in the day when I was doing my powerlifting thing, there was a lot of bodybuilders in there that, uh, that were pro-steroid. Uh, and there was a lot of lifters at the gym were doing steroids. Yeah. 
and some guy was talking to me about it, and I said, well, steroids help, but unless you work your ass off the ceiling, it don't matter. You still got to pump the weight. You still got to pump the weight. All that does is allow the muscles to rebuild faster so you can grow faster. You got to eat like a horse and work out twice as hard. (laughs) You know, and then there are some long-term adverse effects of the steroids, (laughs) you know. Liver cancer is a big one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Not good for the liver to shoot yourself full of steroids all the time, which is why the doctors won't give Lynn any more. Yeah. You know, she's only had, she's had two shots and they won't give her another one. Mm-hmm. Right? But what they're going to shoot her in the spine, if we get to that point, right, is a steroid. It just numbs the nerve right there, okay? Yeah, that's how that works. But we don't want to take credit for it, and we don't want to envy somebody else that God is using. Because remember, it's God doing it. Are you going to envy God (laughs) when you stop and think about it? (laughs) Are you wanting to take God's place now? That's that's, that's what Satan wanted to do. (laughs) Right? You don't want to be on that team. (laughs) And of course, if you're actually a spirit-led Christian, right, we, we deal with these, right? But we're never going to be on Satan's team. Right, but we do have to stop and say, "Is this really?" No, wait a minute. You know, you know, I don't want to be in that position to be envying what God is doing and think I could do better or I would want to do better. Right? I would like to be God for a day and let me win the lottery and all kinds of things. <laughs> right? I mean, I could I could make some changes. You know. <laughs> Imagine something like that. Like. <laughs> yeah, you know, I guess I'd have to go buy a ticket, but <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess if you're a God, you don't have to. You could just materialize one, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Money. Yeah. Suddenly, my bank account's completely full. You know, <laughs> so full the bank can't hold all the money. <laughs> all right. You know, but uh, <clears throat> so the bottom line of the lesson is. We want to follow the Spirit, be led by the Spirit, walk with the Spirit, right? And not do the sinful things that that non-Christians do naturally, you know. And we're not, nobody's saying anybody's going to be perfect. Jesus was the only perfect human being, right? He did have the advantage of being God also. (laughs) No other human being has been able to live, and that's why following the law is such a ridiculous thing. Nobody's been able to do it. <laughs> so what makes you think you're going to be able to do it? Well, there are people who think they're following. Well, but they know they're failing. In their heart they know, because they know their thought patterns, and they know, you know... If you just look at the 10th commandment, it nails you. <laughs> then it says if you break one of them, you've broken them all. <laughs> Well, there I go. <laughs> well, Guilty. They don't listen to the Ten Commandments. Well, the one I'm saying, the ones that quote try to follow the law, right? Now, just a flat out sinner, they're just doing what they think is right, what they think is best, what they think is smart, right? And not realizing how stupid they are. Because they don't know. So we can't be surprised that they act the way they act when they don't have any foundation to stand on. So then, because the Spirit in us leads us, we can pray for them. I guess some of the big failures is that some of some of the more dedicated ones sometimes fall in the, that, that <clears throat> deal where the, they think they're better and that they are doing everything that they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, they, you know, I mean, without, that, without the right foundation, they think they're being smart. They're doing good things. Yeah. When in fact they're doing all kinds of wrong things. You know, they, they don't know because they don't have the foundation of truth to stand on. Well, 
you know, there are a whole lot of folks who have gone to church and gone through the curriculum and all of that, and they uh, think they're doing what it's said to do. They convince themselves. They've convinced themselves, and... Well, and that's the thing. It's kind of like the Be folks. sure we're being led by the Spirit, not by the flesh. Right? right. And we, we go through that battle all the time, you know, dealing with the things that, quote, we want to do. <laughs> and, and we can easily convince ourselves, and we can rationalize it and pull out a scripture or two and say, yeah, this is the right thing to do, when in fact we know it's just us. <laughs> this is what I want to do. Yeah. Versus stopping and saying, Lord God, you know, <laughs> I'm struggling with this because I really want to go over here and do this, but, you know, is this really what you want me to do? Because <laughs> he, he might say, okay. He might say, no, you're supposed to be way the heck over here. <laughs> you're way off track, which too is often, probably the case. <laughs> too often I don't go through that. I go to it more than I would like. I mean, sometimes when I think about salvation and, and being led by the Spirit, I say, well, my salvation is guaranteed because I believe in Jesus Christ. Whether I'm being led by the Spirit, how could I be that good of a Christian when I'm wanting to shoot this? <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, well, okay, I didn't do it. So that's one good thing. Yeah. So, you know, stuff like that. So I, Just remember, I, it's what's in your heart that counts. I, I keep doing that bad, you know. Yeah. I just saw the time we've got to head out. Heavenly Father, thank you so 